I've been doing a lot of talking in microphones with headphones on so I can hear myself. So I'm kind of like self-conscious now because like I can't hear how I sound in the microphone. So here I am again in my sweatshirt that I love. It's called a hoodie. It doesn't matter what it's called. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm having some problems that I haven't had in a while. And by problems, I mean, like, I'm doing a lot of things that don't involve writing, and that's, like, hurting me in terms of, like, being able to reach my writing goals. Listen, I don't mind having a lot of things to do. The more that I am doing, the more tasks that I have, the better I just generally feel about life in general. That's just how I am. When I feel overwhelmed, it's usually a good thing because it means I'm forced to prioritize and decide what I'm going to work on first and what I'm going to leave to the side for later. And I feel like that's always teaching me something important. Why did I say important like that? I don't know. So I'm doing a podcast and I can't tell you about it yet, but I can tell you that I'm doing a podcast. Not by myself. That might come later this year. I don't know. It would be more of a revival of a podcast that used to exist. We'll talk about it. Or not. I'm also doing a lot of like data entry work for um, something else that I am doing, not for myself. That's fine. It's not difficult. It just is time consuming and it's not writing. So I really struggled the last half of this month. Like really struggled. Like I was really on a roll. And then everything just kind of fell apart. <laughs> I, I'm not, I am, I'm going to cut myself some slack because I was sick. And I am finally feeling, like, completely better. But I probably still could have been doing a lot more. Um, and I wasn't. Because of reasons. I don't know what those reasons are. I don't know if I... I think I just got too far behind on everything. And then couldn't decide what was most important. And so... Nothing got done. Which is actually not true. I did keep up with the blog posts, as I always do. I did do some other writing, but uh, yeah, I'm still like way behind. And now I'm even further behind on my overall goal than I wanted to be. But we're not talking about that yet because April's almost over, which means it's time for another reflection video later this week. But for now, I'm just talking about this past week. And this past week, I uh, tried to do a thing, which was I tried to wake up earlier um, so that I had more time for all the things and... That didn't happen. I think what I'm realizing, other than the fact that my current routine is really not working, um, is that I'm very stubborn. I um, have always known this about myself, and stubbornness has always been something that's helped me most of the time, rather than hurt me. I'm too stubborn to quit most of the time, so I just like keep trying things until I find something that works, and I fail a lot. But I just keep going because I, you know, quitting, just why would I do that when I already put so much effort into something? No quitting allowed, I guess. However, when it comes to, like, realizing that what I'm doing isn't working and I need something to be different, um, not only do I have to figure out what that change needs to be, for example, waking up earlier, but I also need to, like, actually make it happen. And that's the hard part. And when I'm laying in bed at 4.30 in the morning and I should be getting up, but I don't, usually the thoughts that are going through my head are like, you know, is it really necessary to change my routine? Like, is it really that bad? Like, is sleeping in for another half hour really going to mess everything up for real? Like, but the thing is, my routine is not working. There's a reason that I haven't been writing as much as I want to have been writing and a lot of that has to do with my time management which I'm not doing well right now at all so I know this about myself and about my time and about my life in general no one is going to change these things except for me I have to make the decision to wake up early I also have to actually wake up early and do whatever it takes to make sure that that happens. I have to choose writing over Netflix or Hulu or whatever it is. I have to make these things happen for myself. No one can do that for me. And 
when you are too stubborn to make the changes in your life that need to happen, um, that can make you feel stuck. I think I felt stuck in some kind of rut for a couple weeks. Um, I know that disrupting my routine really messes with, you know, everything. I was doing great for like over a month straight and then I left to go to Star Wars Celebration and then I came back and everything has been messed up since then. Um, there's a reason I don't travel very much um, and why I set big goals and then get mad at myself when everything gets disrupted. Well, it's like you can't just write all the time. You got to go out and do stuff. It is what it is. How do you fix stubbornness? I think you do all you can to use it to your advantage. So, you know, in a way you can turn that weakness into a strength. And you can say like, okay, well, I feel like I'm too stubborn to make this change. But what if I'm so stubborn that I make this change anyway because I don't want the alternative. I'm too stubborn to let the alternative or failing happen. Let's say you want to write a thousand words today and you will have to not watch your Monday night show. I don't know what's on on Monday nights. It doesn't matter. In order to get the writing done, you have to skip it, record it, come back to it later. Well, it's part of your routine. You've been watching it every week since the season started and you don't want to not watch it. You're like, I'm not going to do that. I want to stay, I want things to stay exactly as they are. That's you being stubborn and you know it. And, you know, there's no shame in that. Some of us are just like that. But you also know that if you watch your show, there's a pretty good chance you're not going to get those a thousand words done. And that's not fun to your brain. It doesn't like that idea. So can you be stubborn in the sense that you're like, well, I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to let some show that I can watch tomorrow stand in my way. Gosh darn it, I'm going to write those a thousand words, even if it means not getting to watch my show until later tonight or tomorrow or whatever. Things don't always have to stay the same. And even if you're happy with your routine, sometimes things just every once in a while need to change. You need to shake things up. It's kind of like how every once in a while I need a new running playlist. I like the songs that are on it and they motivate me to, you know, do the running things and that's great. Every once in a while I need new songs though, just because it kind of, you know, resets me and gives me something else to listen to and it feels good, even though it's just different music. The same thing can apply to your routine. Even if you think everything is great, if you change up just like one little thing, that kind of like tricks your brain almost. And you're like, oh, this kind of works better. I like this. And then, I don't know, six months from now, you can change it again or you can change it back. Or if you change it and it doesn't work, you can go back to doing the same thing you were doing before and it's probably fine. Writing is as much about the process and the scheduling and uh, the time management as it is telling the actual stories that you're writing. If you're going to take your writing more seriously, if you want to get more writing done, if you want to have more things to put out there into the world, uh, you have to treat it like it really matters. You can't just say, oh, you know, I think I'll write today. Tell yourself exactly how much you're going to write, what you're going to work on, when you're going to do it, and for how long, because if you don't do that, it's not going to happen. And you're going to go days and days and days with saying you want it to happen, but it's never going to. And they're going to wonder like a year from now, why haven't I gotten any writing done? Because you're not putting the steps in to make it happen. Like you can't, you can take writing too seriously sometimes. Like you can forget to have fun, but there's nothing wrong with scheduling time to write. Like it's not going to ruin the experience for you just because you put it in your calendar. Like, you're just telling yourself, okay, this is when I'm going to write and this is how much I'm going to do. If you're too stubborn to do that, I don't know. You, you have to force yourself to do it sometimes. People don't like the idea that they're going to take something that's supposed to be enjoyable and force themselves to do it even when they don't want to. Um, <laughs> there's a reason writing is called work. Um, and it's that sometimes you have to do it when you don't feel like it. Um, and forcing yourself to do something is not necessarily going to make it a bad experience. It's just going to give you another reason to do it. 
and give you fewer reasons, hopefully, to let's say slack off and not do it. I still have a lot to catch up on. I'm very behind on things, so I'm going to leave you with this. If you are looking at your writing goals or your writing to-do list or the things that you should have been working on in your mind and you haven't been, really ask yourself why that is. And not just like, oh, I didn't feel like it or, oh, I ran out of time or, oh, I, you know, chose something else instead. Really go deeper and ask yourself, like, really, why did I not do this? Is it because I am scared to do it? Is it too hard? Is it not as easy as I thought it would be? With goals, there's always a reason why you're not doing the thing that you keep telling yourself you want to be doing. And the first step to solving that problem is to figure out, you know, what's stopping you? What are the barriers? What do you need to work on internally? in order to make things change, and then figure out a plan for how you're going to kind of make a solution actually happen. Because a lot of people spend a lot of time looking at their problems, identifying possible solutions, but never actually applying any of those solutions to their lives. And so they talk about changing and they talk about how they want things to be different, but nothing ever happens. Change is about more than just talking about the way you want things to be. You also have to turn those thoughts and that talk into actions and make things happen for yourself. No one's going to do it for you. You have to make the decision to do it and then you actually have to go and do it. So you may be using your stubbornness as an excuse, as I have many times in my life. Oh, I'm too stubborn to do that. No, it's probably not going to happen. I just don't want to make a change. Make the change. <laughs> Force yourself to do it. Probably what's going to happen is you're going to realize, oh, you know, this isn't as hard as I thought it would be. I was kind of scared to do this, but it's really not as scary as, you know, I figured it might be. At the very least, give it a try and see what happens. Because you might find out that the best decision you could have possibly made was actually changing your life. Not just talking about it, not just thinking about it, not just wondering what could be, but actually taking steps forward and seeing what could be different and what will be different in the future. All right, that's it. And there was no dog interrupting my inspirational speech this time, so cool. <laughs> Have a good week. I'll see you in my reflection video. Hopefully later this week, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Who knows at this point? Bye-bye. <laughs>